We're back on 2IT Sports. Uh, and we've got some, uh, some cool stuff to talk about, Jason. That uh, in this crazy world of ongoing catastrophes, it is good to shed some happy stories on life. Like what? Like I got to meet Kaepernick. Oh, I thought you were going to say like what? No, the, the, the happiness comes before the, the, the following despair. Uh, the fact is, yeah, uh, I got to meet the guy and I loved that because I have obviously vocalized how much of a fan I've been of him. Mm -hmm. But then as I came in on my high horse, Jason is right there with his sword this morning. I was with some more news. that when I saw the picture of you two, he didn't get a haircut. Oh yeah, because that should have been, then one it of just the, immediately rolled his chances out. One of the reasons that he couldn't be signed. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> look. I don't know what kind of more evidence. You're gonna hear the same pretty much regurgitated top talking points we've had on this channel for clip after clip after clip as it pertains to who gets signed and who doesn't. But it's really tough to not get just slightly irked still, even though you know the story, even though you know he's blackballed. And if you refuse to believe that, well, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you at this point. But. The Ravens signed what they call a camp arm, which by the way is a term that I haven't really heard all that often, except if you're like camp hands, as in practice squad players, usually wide receivers that are picked up for a week and dropped the next week and then picked up the week after that as some players get injured through the year because you know we're talking about football, injuries happen m more often than not in mm -hmm. this sport. Um, the Ravens, uh, uh, let me sorry, pull up his name, I'm sorry. Uh, because his name is totally irrelevant to the point. <laughs> uh, the Ravens signed uh, QB David Olson, who is from an indoor football league in the Kansas City Phantoms. There is a slight connection to Jim Harbaugh. John Harbaugh is the coach of the Baltimore Ravens. His brother Jim coaches Michigan. Uh, and I'm sure there was some sharing of information as to uh, uh, Olson being a backup to Andrew Luck at some points in Stanford. But the point being here is uh, Kaepernick was the guy to sign if you're Baltimore. If you need somebody when your starting quarterback, Joe Flacco, has a disc back disc injury or a slip disc, if anything, and he's gonna be out for three to six weeks, and that couldn't be nagging. So your starter, your your elite quarterback is already at risk. You need a quarterback. I don't think Kaepernick has to sign for the amount of money anymore. I'm pretty sure he would take a contract for less if it could be worked out. Uh, I'm just not getting angry. I'm just keep just keeping no, cool. No, there's no, like, point, there's no point anymore. There's no point like, anymore. Like just, oh, it's annoying. When you see it this morning, when I when I read the news after you, you brought it my way, <laughs> I, I, I thought, <laughs> yeah, I had it backwards. I was like, oh, he's maybe gonna. I thought the Falcons signed them because you know there's so many birds in the NFL Falcons, that it's hard to keep up. Falcons, Seahawks, Seahawks Eagles, Eagles, just a lot Ravens. of birds. Just be limited. So when you said, uh, I just heard a bird and I thought, oh, the Falcons signed an indoor quarterback. Are the Ravens still interested in Kaepernick? And then you said to me, oh, no, no, no. The Ravens were interested in Kaepernick and they signed the indoor quarterback. So yeah, the same regurgitated points will be mentioned, but it's the same regurgitated points that often fall on deaf ears still. Um, there is time and time again, uh, whether it's Geno Smith, whether it's blah, 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 uh, these um, quarterbacks that are being signed statistically fail in comparison to Colin Kaepernick. And then there's the argument that he wants too much money or the argument that was put forward by Pete Carroll that he's too good to be a backup. Um, that's, horrible, yeah. that's a, a very similar argument that's regurgitated here. Like, I, I think that's just a shallow excuse. I really don't think that they consider that because how many times have we seen in the NFL backup quarterbacks step up to the plate that are willing to be backup quarterbacks. Kaepernick was a backup quarterback at the start of the season in the 49ers last year. Correct me if I'm wrong, he was not the starting quarterback and he stepped in when they needed him. Uh, Dak Prescott, backup quarterback, had a phenomenal season. So the idea that there has to be a standard just to be backup, if a guy's available and he's on the market, I don't think that he would question uh, if he was too good to be signed for a backup. Everyone who gets signed for a team wants to fight for their place and I'm sure he's no different. So these are just, in, in my mind, just Asinine, yeah, excuses. nothing burger excuses. Ah, oh, that, that would be an insult to nothing burgers, yeah. Francis, if you will, from, I don't know, one of the guys. Surely before. someone's already started Someone said something about nothing, nothing burgers. burgers. Fox News said something, it would be an insult to burgers to call this a nothing burger. It's like, we've we've offended meat. Yeah. <laughs> we've offended the cheese. Hi, in and out we, I'm sorry about this. We, we've hit a point in this country where we've brought in food and we're offending it. And there's also a hot dog on Snapchat. So I'm just saying, Obviously, food has taken a major priority in the spotlight of American subcultures. Uh, here were Joe, 
Joe Flacco. It was John Harbaugh's actual words. Uh, it said he's, he does say he's gonna leave the door open for a potential Kaepernick signing still. But you know that he's not going to make that move. He's just trying to handle what is now considered damage control. And the word that gets thrown around way too much, distraction control. Do we really need to make that move or not? Harbaugh told CBS NFL insider Jason LaConforna. On Friday, that's the decision that really has to be made. I think there are a lot of layers to it just from a football standpoint. We're definitely gonna go get another arm in here, but he's not an arm, obviously, Harbaugh said of Kaepernick. He's an accomplished football player, and we always like having good football players. <laughs> I just. I know I don't want to get mad. Here's the thing: I don't want to hold coaches that accountable no, because no, I, I really do believe owners are saying something. I believe owners are saying like, "You bring on this Kaepernick guy, you can kiss. Like, you, you're gonna have a world of pain or whatever." I don't know how owners talk. No, I, that, <laughs> it's always stop signing it's checks. Always been, much. <laughs> it's always been at the executive level uh, in my thought process. Like we know, after hearing from uh, the former. 49ers coach last year, all that shite about him being a distraction. He came out, the man that ran that uh, dressing room and said, that's a whole lot of shite. He said he right. was never a distraction. All the teammates uh, respected what he did. They, they held a level of professionalism. They had focus uh, consistently on the game. And he ended up taking home an award that was given him as a symbol of how much of a team player he was to his fellow teammates. That's coming from the coaching level. But if you move up the, la the ladder to the executive level, they're not in the dressing rooms. They're really, they're just they're working from the money standpoint with what they hear from uh, investors and Goodell and everyone else who's at the top of the ladder that does not give two shites right. how many uh, floors down you are. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. I never think that, it, I take John Mara's word as Bible on the situation because he's the exact type of mind that is trying to contemplate reasons for not taking Kaepernick. Like right. as much as I ripped into Mara, at least he gave us an insight into the thought process of what's going at on. Least in the he executives. said what we already knew, and I'm not defending it. It's terrible decision making on his part, and of course, uh, I, it reminds me a lot of what we had Thomas Jones on about two years mm -hmm. ago, running back for the Chicago Bears, uh, and the New York Jets, I believe, too. He had a solid year. He played. He ran for the Jets. Thomas Jones. Yeah, and he also like he also had a great. He was like one of the few running backs who had a good over age thirty season. Yeah, uh, he said that it's not like other locker rooms in sports. He goes in basketball locker room, you got fifteen players in there. All personnel included is less than like one offensive unit. Yeah, in football, if you include coaches, so he's saying like year in and year out. There's all these different players, these people you've never met before that come in and people talk so much about camaraderie in the locker room. More so than not, it's not exactly a friendly environment. So when they throw around the word distraction, like they use like Kaepernick as like the definition of what a distraction would be. When like there's a better chance that some guy running in trying to take over like team leadership positions, potentially there's not, everybody's not on the same page, some players going out before games or getting whatever, drunk before games. Some yeah. players, of course, with all the issues that you've brought up multiple times in the videos past that we don't have to go into too much detail. Like, I don't know what they mean by distraction anymore. I think it's just a buzzword that the media clings on to that don't like Kaepernick and feel that they really, really hurt, he really hurt America yeah. by protesting. Really hurt America badly. Uh, there could be I another video me. of all the other things that are not considered well, distraction. He's, uh, he's sure. vegan. Did some, oh, sorry, was that an was. NFL or was it basketball when someone brought a gun into the locker room? That was Gilbert Arenas. That was a basketball. Signed a big contract. That, too. Was that considered a distraction? Well, was it the NFL or was it the NBA where Marvin Harrison was accused of murdering people? Was it the NFL or the NBA where Ray Lewis was accused of murdering people? No. Was it the NFL or the NBA where uh, multiple players were charged with domestic violence? Uh, but that wasn't that was a distraction because the other team were then therefore intimidated at was the thought of pertaining the NBA and, uh, where one of the murder. guy the guy in question started in the Super Bowl and fell one play short of winning this the Super Bowl. Was it the NFL or the NBA? Yeah. Or I mean, not that the NBA is perfect, but like was it the NFL or was it cricket? That the guy who <laughs> started the Super Bowl. <laughs> what a clip. Um, yeah, so it's just another example of what we have been reminded of of the ongoing uh, Kaepernick situation. I'm sure you guys are having a healthy debate in the comment section uh, You're gonna about it. Going to him in the first round of your fantasy league. You think just in case. Just I'd in love case. to. I, I will have my Kaepernick Cam shirt first, on if I could. Cap second. Yes. I wish I could. <laughs> um, but.
Uh, for those that were asking beforehand on, on my social media yeah, and stuff, the there's, there's not an interview mm. with Kaepernick out yet because as professional as the guy is, I can give you insight into the brief, the, well not brief, I talked to him for a little bit, but uh, like anything else, he wants to focus on trying to play football and that's why he's not been speaking to the media, which of course they have turned into another negative. Well, he's, he's not talking, so clearly yeah. he doesn't care that much. I don't know, he's doing what you're supposed to do, which is keeping himself uh, focused on trying to be fit for the season. I can speak first hand as a guy who How um, tall is he? He's, he's at least you, six it? four, six five. And he's humongous. <laughs> like he is his arms are the size of my body. So he looked in pretty decent shape. Um, and I can imagine that he would be ready if six called upon. Four. And very nice guy, by the way. Which is just again, probably falls on yeah, the I, I, If I was a coach, I wouldn't sign him either because of that weird vegan diet too. Maybe, maybe it might be so. Uh, yeah, I agree. Because he's not got uh, Giselle making the, the vegan foods for it would him. Only, it would help. That would. I mean, I'm not gonna knock it off. Never mind. Uh, hit us in the <laughs> comment section below. We'll see you guys soon, I'm sure. Uh, and to answer other questions, I haven't left. Why are people asking me if I've left? Because if we go anywhere, if we take a day off, we're fired. It's, we got, like, they finally fired us, <laughs> is what they say. They fired us on our day off. That's JR's line. That's it. Who gets fired on the day off? How do you get fired on your day off? <laughs>